Hi, I'm Joe Albano, and I'll be taking you through this collection of video tutorials on the basics of sound and audio processing. We have a lot of tutorials available that cover working with music software and various mixing and processing tips and tricks. But as I'm sure you've heard said many times, it's not just the tools, but the person using them. The more a musician or engineer or mixer knows about the nature of sound and sound waves themselves, the better use he or she will be able to make of the tools of the trade. That was the idea behind the audio concepts courses. This series takes a look at the basics of audio and sound waves from top to bottom. The goal is to provide the kind of knowledge that'll allow a user to do more than just work from prefab project templates or choose from preset effects, but instead set up their own work environment and apply all the standard types of audio processing from scratch, customizing settings to the specific tasks at hand. And of course, the better understanding you have of the underlying principles of sound, the easier it'll be to troubleshoot when the sound just isn't happening, and maybe get a little creative to get the mix back on track. The series consists of five courses. Three explore the technical aspects of sound and recording equipment, the background, and the other two focus on applications, basics and key aspects of recording, mixing, and processing that everyone should really have under their belt before getting deep into a project. The first course, Audio and Sound Basics, looks at the nature of sound waves, how they're created and transmitted, and the basic physical properties of sound waves, the aspects of the sound that we're trying to manipulate creatively in our work. I'll cover all the terminology and measurements you need to know to get the best recordings and mixes. Frequency, amplitude, hertz, decibels. I'll explain the mysteries of tone, how harmonics and overtones figure in, and other key aspects of sound, like ADSR envelopes. There's even a section on how our ears work, including some of the psychoacoustic perceptions we take advantage of to fool our hearing with some of the really classic studio effects. And there's a little bit on protecting our hearing, something we can't afford to ignore. The second course, Audio Processing Basics, takes the basic concepts from Course 1 and applies them to four of the most fundamental aspects of studio work. Recording, mixing, EQ, and dynamics processing. There's a look at setting up and getting proper levels for digital recordings. And while this series is not a collection of mixing tips and tricks, we've got that elsewhere. This course covers the basic technical considerations of mixing. The kind of things that, if you don't pay attention to them, will get in the way of creativity and a smooth workflow when you're in the moment, in a busy session or mix. These include level management and gain staging. There's also a brief look at panning considerations. But the biggest part of Course 2 is a primer on EQ and dynamics. I go through all the basics of filters and EQs, the various controls and graphs, and there are several application tips on applying EQ to individual tracks and to tracks within a mix. Dynamics processing, which includes compression and limiting and expansion and gating, is the subject of a number of tutorials with a focus on compression. I go through compression in detail, including application notes as well as a thorough rundown of the various controls and appropriate settings for some classic uses. There's a section on the use of compression and limiting and mastering, a must for the modern digital engineer. And the course wraps up with a brief look at expansion and gating and a couple of sidechain applications. The third course in the series, Acoustics, goes back to a little theory. It's all about how sound waves behave in enclosed spaces behavior which gives rise to so many effects, like chorus, flanging, echo, and reverb. This background on the behavior of sound waves includes their interaction with the room, absorption, transmission, and reflection, and the very important concept of phase, which figures into so many aspects of sound in the studio. I cover physical phenomena that relate to reflected sound, like comb filtering and echoes, and psychoacoustic phenomena, like the Haas effect, the basis for studio techniques like doubling or ADT. There's a section or two on issues that low frequencies create in rooms, standing waves, traditionally one of the biggest problems most smaller studios face. And there are several discussions of room treatments and other techniques for optimizing the studio space. 
controlling sound within the room, and soundproofing the space against the outside world. The topics covered in Course 3 are the background for the applications discussed in Course 4, Delay and Reverb Effects. This course covers how to create all the basic delay and reflection-based effects from scratch, flanging, chorusing, doubling, or ADT, and echo, as well as phasing, and even a look at the classic Leslie rotary speaker, which combines several of those effects. And, of course, there's a comprehensive look at reverb. Everything from the traditional mechanical reverb devices of the classic studio era to the most up-to-date reverb plugins. I show how to set up a send and return connection for applying a single reverb to multiple tracks. Always a difficult hookup for newbies. And I'll cover the two most common types of reverb plugins, traditional algorithmic reverbs and modern convolution reverbs, sampling reverbs. And finally, Course 5, Sound Recording, concludes the series with a look at the tools of recording, transducers, microphones and loudspeakers, and recording media, analog tape and digital interfaces. There's several sections on mics, the different types, dynamic, ribbon, condenser, and the various response patterns. I go over a few technical issues that often crop up with microphone usage, and there's a brief look at loudspeaker technology and applications. Finally, the course covers recording media, the classic analog magnetic tape, and the modern digital interfaces and the converters that get sound into and out of the computer DAWs we all use. These topics range from technical to practical, with a look at the way both analog tape and digital converters capture sound. And the course finishes up with some practical discussion of the standard file formats of our digital audio files. Overall, the audio concept series is a pretty comprehensive take on a pretty big subject, and I think there's something in there for anyone who works with, or plans to work with, sound and recording tools, and wants to dig a little deeper. The first course, which gets the ball rolling in the next video, is a first step into that rabbit hole of audio and sound. I hope you'll get something really helpful out of all of it. So let's get started.